Happy Sentinels whenever the hell again. This is the game where I test out the Definitive Edition Conversion Guide. So the first thing I want to say is thanks to everyone who filled out my survey. Here are the results. Our Enhanced Edition Hero is Mainstay. Our Cauldron Hero is Gargoyle. Our Definitive Edition Hero is Fanatic. And the Custom Hero is Charlie Edsall P.I. So congratulations to Bobbert O'Reilly for creating a character who has apparently made a big splash in the community. I was pleased to see him on top of the list. We are, of course, going to be fighting Baron Blade, and we'll be fighting him on Advanced, the rules for which are going to be... I think they're exactly the same as in Enhanced Edition, so no issues there. And, of course, we're playing in Insula Permalis. I have the deck turned sideways, but when I alt over it, it will show up properly. Funny note, these, especially, I mean, especially the hero character card, because it's, it is actually larger, but all of the definitive edition cards are so huge compared to the Reavers mod. I had to shrink everything down so much. So, let's read the conversion guide, like, top to bottom. All right, so here are the changes as they're laid out. Phases. Everything has start, play, end for the villain and environment, start, play, power, draw, end for the hero. And that's not hard to deal with because that's how the digital game works, because that's basically how Enhanced Edition has to work. On non-definitive edition cards, treat effects that happen at the start of your turn as happening during your start phase, and effects that happen at the end of your turn as happening during your end phase. Environments. So most of the environment changes don't matter for this game because we're playing with a definitive environment, but for non-definitive sentinels, treat every non-target environment card as if it also has the ongoing keyword, since none of them are structured as one-shots. Additionally, the environment itself is no longer a source of damage. All damage comes from a target one way or another, thus any damage not dealt by a target needs to be updated. Make any damage that doesn't have a source other than the environment itself come from the environment and target with the highest HP. If there are no environment targets in play, then the damage is fixed damage that comes from the target being dealt damage. As a result of the changes to how environment cards work, change any non-definitive hero card that destroys an environment card to now destroy an ongoing card instead. I think that's the biggest major change. Along with this one, text that is not in play cannot continue to affect the game. Thus, any one-shot card that has a persistent effect should be treated as an ongoing card, such as Tachyon's Hypersonic Assault. Any one-shot that becomes an ongoing this way gains start phase destroy this card. There's an explanation of fixed damage. When a hero would deal themselves damage as a cost to do something like keeping a card in play, the damage should be fixed. So that'll at least be for mainstay's shard strength if I end up playing that. No target can go below 0 HP. So when a target reaches 0 HP, it's destroyed unless something in play says otherwise. And the HP cannot go negative even if it stays in play somehow. Indestructible is now a keyword, but no longer prevents effects that put the card on the top or bottom of the deck, return it to hand, or remove it from the game. It just means it can't be destroyed. If some effect would play a limited card and there's already a copy of that limited card in play, the card you're attempting to play goes to your hand instead. Equipment, of course, is now item. That one's easy to keep track of. And that's basically it. So we just need to remember that one shots with ongoing effects are now ongoing cards. Mainstay's got one of those. And, you know, the way things interact with the environment is the main change. So the big thing that I want to talk about before we get started is Gargoyle. Because we all know how Gargoyle works. He gets pluses and minuses to his next damage dealt. That's not a thing you can do anymore. And I've said since I knew about that rule that Gargoyle would not work in Definitive Edition. But I actually realized just very recently he totally can. All you do, like if you're doing this for realsies, you give him a setup card that's basically got a like a blood sworn coliseum favor pool. So the top one is pluses to damage, the bottom one is minuses to damage. And when he deals damage, you take all the tokens from the top pool, subtract all the tokens from the bottom pool, and add that to his damage. So the card's in play. It gives a thing, and using tokens means you don't have to worry about his cards increasing his next damage. And given the fact that I've always kept track of his next damage buff with a counter, the way that I keep track of token pools for other heroes, it makes perfect sense. All right, so we are ready to begin. Baron Blade has been set up. When he would be destroyed, instead he flips. Start phase, 15 cards ends the game. End phase, discard the top two cards of the villain deck. And here we go. Ah, Living Force Field. Change to this one is in the end phase, Baron Blade regains H minus one HP. So we'll go ahead and do that. Discard two cards. And then the mobile defense platform reveals the top card of the villain deck. It's not a minion, so it gets discarded. And we're a fifth of the way to losing. We are going to kick the tires. Draw a card, destroy an ongoing or equipment card. 
If I destroyed one of my cards this way, I can play a card. Well, no, we're just going to get rid of the Living Force Field, and then he will beat down the Mobile Defense Platform and draw another card. Of course, this is the other thing, like something to fear. Select a target, reduce the next damage it deals by one, increase the next damage a gargoyle deals by one. So he would get a token to his pool. See, I, I haven't thought this all the way through, so you need some kind of token pool to apply to other targets. I guess what we'll do is play this as an ongoing next Baron Blade and just say the next time he deals damage, reduce it by one and destroy this card. And then we summon a Hunter card, specifically Leash Field, and then, okay, again with Drain, reduce the next damage a target deals by one. So we're gonna just have to use the tokens. I don't, yeah, I don't know how you would... No, okay, let, no, forget that. We're gonna do this as a token pool. He adds another token to Baron Blade's negative damage token pool and draws a card. All right, Charlie's going to open with a bare knuckle brawl, so we need to get some damage on that platform. So he'll deal the platform one melee damage, it hits him for one melee damage, and it hits it for two more. And then we use Shapeshifter, have him deal a target one toxic damage, and heal back to full and draw a card. We are going to start Fnatic off with Divine Sacrifice. Fnatic deals herself up to three radiant damage. Fnatic deals X targets three radiant damage each, where X is the amount of damage dealt to Fnatic this turn. So she's going to hit herself for three, and she'll hit the platform, and she'll hit Baron Blade, who is immune, and she'll hit herself because she has to hit three targets. And then her base power, Exorcism, deals a target one melee and one radiant damage, and then deals herself one fixed psychic damage. So almost took out the platform in one round, but that's okay. Draw a card. All right, first environment card is River of Lava. If imminent eruption is not in place, summon it. Okie dokie. You guys didn't get to see this in my other video. Where is it? It's on the very bottom of the deck, of course. So that means we search for it, put it in the play, shuffle the deck. Imminent Eruption is very different from the original Volcano, but give me a moment. Imminent Eruption deals each target other than itself to fire damage. So it is now a Volcano, and it is indestructible. And during the end phase, if it has 10 or more HP, we play the top card of the Environment deck. Otherwise, it deals each target other than itself fire damage equal to its current HP. If it goes down to 0 HP, it shuffles back into the Environment deck. So it's going to hit everybody for 2. The cool thing is that takes out the mobile defense platform and hits Baron Blade, who does not have minus one anymore. Gargoyle will leech field it, reduce it by one, and add a token to his next damage pool. All right, and that was a one shot. So end of turn, that has 20 HP. We play the top card of the environment deck. It's a cord Ankylosaurus. I actually really like this, that I can just play the cards sideways and they'll show up properly. End phase, this card deals with two targets other than itself with the highest HP, three melee damage. And notice they've gotten rid of the each qualifier, like, Getting people to do that properly in Enhanced Edition is actually kind of difficult. So that's going to be Baron Blade and Charlie. Alright, Baron Blade plays Devious Disruption. Each hero may destroy any of their ongoing and or item cards. Baron Blade deals each hero character X lightning damage, where X is the number of hero ongoing and item cards in that hero's play area, plus three. So we've only got one Gargoyle, we'll keep it out. You talk about the improvements made to decks in Definitive Edition, this card right here because it sucks so much shit to be like, oh, we got seven cards out over the last two rounds, now we have to get rid of all of them or we'll die. But no, no, not no more. So he's going to do three damage to everybody. Gargoyle takes four, except he adds a token to his next damage pool and reduces it by one. And then we discard the top two cards of the deck, and he's up to eight, so we need to beat his ass. I think Void Belter will be a good choice for that. I'll just go ahead and hit him for three melee damage. Oh right, and one of those should have been reduced by two. I'm actually gonna spend that on Mainstay. So Mainstay took two less damage. Fnatic wants to take all the damage. Argo is gonna do something to fear again, so we'll add a token to Baron Blade's negative damage pool, add a token to Gargoyle's next damage pool, and then we will summon another Hunter card. I'm gonna do Preservation Engine, because this is another one. This card as written cannot work in Definitive Edition, because HP cannot go below zero, so it would have to be changed to something like when Gargoyle deals more damage than a target has HP, that increases next damage by X, or add that many tokens to his next damage pool. I'm going to use the power on this, discard two and draw two, because I want some different stuff. Draw a card. Let's go ahead and do plans taking shape. So we are going to collect an ongoing card. We'll go for element of surprise. So that is collected, so it goes in his hand, shuffle his deck, and he can deal himself two, let's say, fixed psychic damage to play an ongoing card, Element of Surprise. And we'll go ahead and use that, have Charlie deal a target, three melee damage, hit Baron Blade, because we need to really, we really need to hit him. Draw a card. Let's go ahead and do Ages of Resurrection, which works exactly the same, wording's just been changed a little bit. Just go ahead and hit Baron Blade for two, hit herself for one, draw a card. 
Nothing on the start phase here, so we continue on. Grazing Stegosaurus, you guys have seen this one. Okay, the Volcano plays the top card. Dinosaur Stampede, uh-oh. Discover two dinosaur cards. Each dinosaur card deals each non-environment target one fixed melee damage. And I did this wrong in the other video because, let's see, we get a Ankylosaur and a Velociraptor pack. Holy crap, there's three Velociraptor packs. This is fixed damage, so it can't be increased. So the Velociraptor packs only deal one damage. Wow, each dinosaur deals each non-environment target one melee damage. That's four damage to everybody. Gargoyle can add a token to his next damage pool, but doesn't actually reduce it. Okay, that was a one-shot. End phase still. This card deals two targets other than itself with highest HP, three melee damage. That is Baron Blade and Mainstay. They are not quite yet attacking the volcano. Stegosaurus deals the target other than itself with the second highest HP, two melee damage, that will be Baron Blade. It's tied with the Volcano, so the Volcano is highest now, which means this Ankylosaurus hits the Volcano and Gargoyle. And the Velociraptor pack hits the target with the lowest for two melee damage, and that's Fnatic. She is really close to hitting 10 HP. Alright, Baron Blade. Consider the price of victory. This is now an ongoing card. Minus one damage dealt by hero targets. And it is start phase. Each hero discards a card. Baron Blade deals each hero target one sonic damage. Discard the top H minus one cards of the villain deck and destroy this card. Well, if nothing else, Fnatic has a way to get rid of that. So we discard the top two cards of his deck, and we continue on. Oh, Ark just kicked the tires again. Yeah, kick the tires, get rid of that crap, and then Void Belter him for three. Draw a card. Okay, Gargoyle needs to actually deal some damage now. Grim Herald. Gargoyle deals a target three toxic damage. We remove all six tokens from his token pool and do nine damage to Baron Blade. Somebody can discard a card for him to play a card. I think Mainstay's got it. We'll do Essence Theft. Gargoyle may deal three targets, one toxic damage each, one target, three melee damage. Yeah, he'll hit Baron Blade for three. The target was dealt damage this way, so he heals one. And then Power will go ahead and drain, add a token to Baron Blade's negative damage pool, add a token to his positive damage pool, draw a card. Let's do Plans Taking Shape again. Collect another ongoing card. I want Rough Around the Edges. He'll hit himself for two fixed psychic damage and play that card. So this doesn't quite give him a reaction. It's the first time Charlie has dealt damage by another target each turn. That target then deals itself two toxic damage. But he does have enough wherewithal to use Element of Surprise and flip Baron Blade. So, we'll flip to the side, destroy all villain ongoing cards, and set his HP to 30. Last time, we killed him before he got to do anything. This time, with the advanced rule, he takes minus 2 damage. Charlie draws a card. Let's play Absolution, because she's gonna need it. I will go ahead and use it, and score the first hit on Baron Blade. Draw a card. This is gonna be difficult. Alright, anybody start phase? Here are the fewest cards in hand, draws a card, that's Gargoyle. Whew, the environment's getting out of control. Enraged T-Rex, oh boy, just what we needed. End phase, Volcano plays a card. Primordial Plant Life, which is now a one-shot. Each target regains a hit point. No, Fnatic didn't want that. The non-environment target with the lowest HP deals itself three fixed toxic damage. Oh, that's okay. That's Fnatic. She definitely wanted that. Alright, the Ankylosaur hits the two highest, which is Baron Blade for one and Mainstay. Grazing Stegosaur hits the second highest, back to Baron Blade being the highest. That'll be Gargoyle, who can add a token to his damage pool. Cornered Ankylosaur hits Baron Blade and the Volcano. Velociraptor goes after Fnatic, but the Lord is protecting her, so she doesn't care. Enraged T-Rex deals the target other than itself with the second lowest HP, 5 melee damage. That's Fnatic. Glad I have the Ages of Resurrection. Okay, Baron Blade plays a powered turret. So his end phase now is he deals the hero target with the highest HP H melee damage. It'll only be two because of Gargoyle's interference, but that's two, one actually to Gargoyle. He gets another token. And then he deals each hero target one energy damage. Oh, Rough Around the Edges doesn't do anything. He's not dealing irreducible damage. Welp. And the powered turret deals each hero target one energy damage because there are no other devices in play. Fnatic is reduced to zero HP and the Aegis restores her to ten. Okay, now it's time to get messy. Band of the Bones. So this is now an ongoing, because it's increased damage dealt by mainstay this turn by one. So that means instead of start phase destroy this card, it's end phase destroy this card. Mainstay will deal a target three melee damage, that's Baron Blade, and then Void Belter him for two, and we'll go ahead and destroy the Void Belter and hit him for one and one. About the best I can do. Draw a card, end of turn, destroy Bad to the Bone. I guess we'll do Grim Herald again. Deal target three, six, four toxic damage. Somebody can discard a card. Mainstay's got it again. We'll play Violent Assist. And then Drain Baron Blade, draw a card. I'm gonna play Caught in the Act on the turret. 
The target cannot deal damage to targets other than Charlie. Start of my turn, Charlie deals that target 2 melee damage, then destroy this card. I'll go ahead and do Element of Surprise and hit Baron Blade for 1. Draw a card. Okay, Fanatic is ready to open up a can of whoop-ass. Prayer of Desperation. Reveal the top four cards of your deck. Put any item or ongoing cards revealed this way in your hand. Discard the rest. And then if Fanatic has 10 or fewer HP, play up to two cards. Guess what? Oh, I got a Holy Nova. Damn it, all I got was a Rosary of Mysteries, which is not useful. But I can play two cards. Uh, we'll do Smite the Transgressor. Fanatic deals a target two melee damage. If she has 10 or fewer HP, use up to two powers. And note the powers are right now in her play phase. Go ahead and hit the Raptors. I will use Absolution to hit Baron Blade for one, and then hit the Raptors for two and two and take them out. Finally kill the dinosaur. And then she'll use her base power on, I guess, the turret, hit herself. And then with my second card play, yeah, I'll play Rosary of Mysteries, because now I can use that as my power. So shuffle your trash into your deck, discard five cards, well, I only got two, draw five cards, and if she has 10 or fewer HP, she regains up to five HP. So she'll just heal one to keep it the 10 or under. Hopefully that's all she needs. And she draws one more card. See, that's very cool. That's way cooler than what Fnatic used to be able to do in Enhanced Edition. Who's got the fewest cards? Still Gargoyle. The environment plays River of Lava. Imminent Eruption is in place, so it's going to deal each other target two fire damage. Yeah, I guess I should have healed her a little bit more. Baron Blade soaks it. Gargoyle will soak a little bit. Get a token. End phase. The volcano plays another card. It's another river of lava, oh boy. Everybody on fire. All right, the Ankylosaurus is hitting Baron Blade in the volcano. Stegosaurus hits the volcano. It's gonna start dealing us damage if we're not careful here. Although if we can get Blade down to a point where he'll die to it, it might be worth keeping around. There's also only five cards left in the environment deck, so shuffling it in there is not gonna do too much. The other Ankylosaur hits Baron Blade and looks like Gargoyle. And then the Enraged T-Rex goes after the second lowest, which is Fnatic again. Uh-oh. I think she's... Mm, yeah, I... Well, no. Uh, no, yeah, Baron Blade's gonna kill her. Damn it. Okay, that's fine. Baron Blade plays another Devious Disruption. Oh, boy. I guess Caught in the Act doesn't actually matter. Let's see. That doesn't matter. She's dead. It doesn't matter what she does. Okay, so he's gonna deal minus one damage to Charlie. So he's gonna hit him for four. And then hit Gargoyle for... Two with a token, three to mainstay, and Fnatic is incapacitated. And then Baron Blade hits mainstay for four, everybody for one. Or if around the edges still can't hurt him. I should have gotten rid of that. Yeah, I should get rid of it. And then the turret hits everybody for one. Well, I guess it's a good thing mainstay blew his load last round. You know what? Lonesome Highway. Deal non hero target, two melee damage, take out the turret. And he's the hero character card with lowest HP, so he'll hit Blade for four. Irreducible. I think he'll use his power to pound on the T Rex and draw a card. I guess I'm going to Dreamcatcher, draw two cards. I won't reduce his next damage, we'll just have him deal one toxic damage plus three, so hit Baron Blade for two, and he deals zero other targets, two toxic damage each. And then we'll drain Baron Blade and draw a card. Oof. Gumshoe Coat, a little bit too late. Element of Surprise, hit Blade for one, draw a card. All right, what does Fnatic have? Undying Fervor. Looks like she's turned into a mermaid. That's neat. One hero takes their play phase, so this is different than one hero may play a card, because if you can play more than one card during your play phase, you can play more than one card. Hero target reigns 2 HP, or hero target may deal itself 2 fixed psychic damage, and deal another target 4 radiant damage. If Gargoyle had bioenergy pulse, I would do that. I don't know that healing mainstay is worth it. Do I have anything awesome that I could play right now? Yeah, let's have Gargoyle take his play phase. So he'll play Grim Herald, hit Blade for 2. I'm going to have mainstay discard a card because he's going to be dying anyways. And I'll play Terrorize. End of turn, Baron Blade deals himself 1 irreducible psychic damage. Granted, that takes the token out of his pool, but whatever. The Volcano survived. If we had hit it for 1, it would have killed Blade for us. I probably will regret not having done that. Oops. Enraged T-Rex. Oh, just what we needed. This might be the last turn. Not just round, but turn. Pterodactyl Thief. Okay, Ankylosaur hits the... Oh, T-Rex and the Volcano. Stegosaur. Oh, let Mainstay draw a card. The second highest target. Let's see, that second T-Rex is the highest. So the second highest will be the Pterosaur Thief. Ankylosaurus hits T-Rex and... The other T-Rex, T-Rex is hitting the second lowest other than itself. That's one of the heroes, unfortunately. 
Oh, and it's five melee damage, which means Gargoyle can't survive it. That actually means, yeah, one of them kills Gargoyle, and the other one kills Charlie, because Mainstay is the lowest, which means Baron Blade is going to kill him. And this is now start phase, destroy an item card, put onto this card. End phase, this card deals the target other than itself with highest HP, X sonic damage, or X number of cards on this card, plus one. Highest is any of the other dinosaurs will hit the T-Rex. Okie dokie, Baron Blade plays Jet Jump Battalion who reveals the top card of the villain deck, and if the device plays it, it's a remote walking tank, yeah, the mainstay is really screwed. And Baron Blade takes him out. So, okay, what did we learn? Use the volcano to your advantage. If I had just hit it once, everything would have been fine. All I had to do was use that dream catcher, reduce his next damage by one, hit Blade for one, and then hit the volcano for two, and that would have taken Blade out. So, it was a winnable game, I just was not thinking properly, which happens a lot. But there you go, you get a bit of a sense that, I don't know, I kind of felt like the enhanced heroes were a little slow. You know, Fnatic wasn't doing a whole lot that was amazing, but once she hit 10 HP, then she was. It was kind of too little too late, we were playing on advanced mode, and there was not a lot of irreducible damage in play. Um, but yeah, you know, Charlie was dealing himself damage to get extra card plays. Gargoyle was sitting around doing a lot of nothing. Didn't get Bioenergy Pulse out, that would have been very helpful if I had. But there you go, and Slipper Malice went out of control. Baron Blade defeated the heroes because his battle suit is just too tough. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again to everyone who answered the survey. Thanks to Braithwaite and GTG for putting out the Definitive Edition demo mod, and thanks to Bobbit O'Reilly for making Charlie Edsall, who you can find on, on the Case Files expansion on Tabletop Simulator. So, thanks for watching this one, and, you know, support the stuff. That flips so much more nicely.